Hello. I pray that you're well today. As we're praying through life's problems, like O'Martin says, today we want to talk about praying through conflict. What's been the most significant conflict of your life? In your family? In a marriage? Between generations? At work? In relationships with people? The scripture says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. He also says in Matthew 5, 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. So I ask you the question, what causes conflict? Sometimes conflict is because we disapprove of someone else, or there's jealousy, or there's selfishness, or pain or suffering. Just disagreement. We're different. There's conflict. The people look at things a different way. But what does God say? As far as it depends on you, live at peace. Live at peace. Conflict is inevitable in one sense, but extended conflict, difference of opinion is going to happen, but it doesn't have to escalate to argument or fight or extended disagreement. Psalm 34, 14 says, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it, to pursue peace. Can I agree with you? If I can agree with you, then we can be on the same page. Live at peace with all people, it says. In fact, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. And so I ask you this question. In your life, just like in my life, there are things that I wish people agreed with, but they don't necessarily always agree. And I pray that we can figure out the gift of agreement one to another. We can pray through conflict. The scripture says if someone sins against us, we go to them. Just they and we alone that they would seek repentance. And if they don't listen, we take another with us. And if they don't listen yet, we take others. Because relationship reconciliation matters, ultimately. And so, not everybody's the same. Not everybody is that person. But God says this statement. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we think we've never done anything wrong, that's not true. We're a sinner in need of the grace of Jesus Christ. The other person is a sinner in the need of the grace of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, our desire is that the manner in which we live life reflects the grace of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray for wisdom. How can you approach? Pray for wisdom on what you can do. And, and in fact, the question is, you have to ask yourself the question, this person, this individual who writes it says, we need to resist the urge to become recklessly honest. Sometimes we speak too much, say too much, harm with our words. They ask this question, is, there something that's, is this something that's dishonoring God? Are this person's action causing self-inflicted damage? Will the confrontation mend a severed relationship? Or will it make it worse? And you seek wisdom in that respect. We seek wisdom to know. But God says in this sense, he says specifically, may we be people who in fact seek peace and pursue it. May we be people, as far as it depends on you and me, that we pray through the reality of our lives and that we want, in fact, to serve God in peace. Not in conflict, not in disagreement, not in uphor, up, uproar, but in, in grace. In grace. No uproar, but peace. Let's pray. Dear God, we pray for the conflicts in our life. We pray that we are people of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. May we be a peacemaker and not a peace breaker. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today.